Hello, Guy Fieri. Of course it's me. <laughs> yes, I remember our bet. OK, bye. What's your bet? Ah, uh, that's just between us. <clears throat> if you've ever eaten an In-N-Out burger, this is where it came from. Harris Ranch, the largest producer of beef in the west coast of the United States. These are the cows. Check them out. I've just seen a bajillion cows, and it became obvious to me that that is not a sustainable way to produce protein to feed the entire planet. By 2050, we're gonna to need to produce twice as much protein as we do now. How do we do it? Beyond Meat has some ideas. This is Dave, he's executive chef of R&D here at Beyond Meat, and he has made just a small lunch for me, uh, just a little sampling of what's available here at Beyond Meat. All the meat on this table is made from stupid peas. I'll try the strip. It's a little chewier than your traditional chicken. We're very close. So what you're looking at right here is a gas chromatograph. And what that gives us uh, is a measurement of what beef tastes like, what meat tastes like. I can tell you what meat tastes like. You can, but you can't tell it uh, specifically what are all the different compounds that make up that compilation of flavor. That's true. Essentially, it's a fingerprinting of what flavor and aroma exists in meat already. We can actually smell the individual compounds when they come off. So is that what this is for? This is a sniffer. Mm, I'm smelling the actin and myosin, uh, the potassium. Ethan Brown is the founder and CEO of Beyond Meat. He's large, but not scary large. You're the CEO? Yes. And uh, when did you start Beyond Meat? I started the company in early 2009, um, and, uh... Jim, are you sitting on a boat? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that? He's a tall, tall man. Yes, I am tall. Something that I've written about because I cover food is this idea of sort of fetishizing nature in that if people saw the lab equipment here, there's a large section of the food consumers who would just freak out and not sure. want anything to do with it. It's almost a marketing challenge because we have to just describe what we're doing in, in simple terms, right? And so we're taking protein directly from a pea and we're using heating, cooling, and pressure to align it in the form of meat. That's it. Yeah. We have to be able to figure out a way to describe that to consumers so that they understand that what they're having is basically pea protein in the form of meat. Sounds like processed food. I don't eat processed food. I was told not <laughs> to eat processed food. I worked food. so hard to say that. What we're doing is trying to replace food that kids eat every day at school that families eat every night for dinner. And you know whether you want to admit it or not, it's a tale of two processes, and which one do you like? No meat at all is the American future. There's two ways to look at meat. One is you know, meat has to come from a chicken, a cow, or a pig. But you can also think about meat in a different way, which is what is meat made of? And that's how we think about it here. And meat is really made of those five constituent parts, the amino acids, lipids, carbohydrates, minerals, and water. They're all actually present in plants. What we're doing is building a piece of meat directly from those plants, and so the compositions are basically the same. Right. And in that case, we are delivering meat. Clearly, investors, too, see a meat industry revolution on the horizon. Beyond Meat has financial backing from Bill Gates. And you can't even whisper the word disruption without attracting Silicon Valley tech entrepreneurs. Like Biz Stone, the co-founder of Twitter. I joked once at a board meeting that, you know, food is the original social networking. Yeah. You get together to eat. Right? You bring, you invite your friends over, you have a party, you eat. So it's bringing people together, it's like the Twitter of meats. <laughs> I don't know. That's a weird analogy. Meat replacements have been around in a lot of various forms for a long time, but now we have big money. Why yeah. is this happening now and why Beyond Meat? I think it's different here with Beyond Meat because if tech visionaries back in this company, specifically because of the perspective that Beyond Meat is taking, a big global perspective of the future of food. I think that's the, the flip of the switch that has happened here. We're talking about like, you know, feeding the world. Of course, Beyond Meat isn't the only player in the alternative meat game. 
I'm here at the Bon Appetit Food Tech Conference here in San Francisco, where startups are competing to replace animal meat with new, sustainable sources of protein. It's all nut-based protein. That's your Entirely nut-based. That's your thing. Very nutrient-dense. Insect protein combines nutritional density of animal protein with the environmental efficiency of plant protein. Today we do not put insects anywhere in or around our product. We're using pea protein and brown rice protein, and we're totally against soy protein. With the soy, we ferment it just to the very tiny pieces. Plant proteins don't necessarily have all the amino acids, they don't have all the vitamins. Crickets are a high quality animal protein, but they can be raised with a really small environmental footprint and a small physical footprint. You're sort of easing people into the idea of crickets. You're not serving Very, very much so. It's, uh, it's a kind of introductory vehicle to get people used to the idea before we go towards whole insects or bug max or whatever that might be decades right. from now. Right. Wait, bug max? Bug max. What's that? Burgers. Oh, bug max. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Shit. I'm here at Whole Foods in El Segundo, California, where seasonal gourds are being sold. But also, inside, Beyond Meat is on the countertops, or the shelves. You might never guess where. Coming up after the break, we'll explore some... <laughs> no break. So uh, here are some of the packages. Here with tofu. Right, and so what we're, what we're doing is the research development team is working on um, platforms that allow us to get into the meat case. So it would be offered just as you would buy uh, fresh meat. And I think it's a really uh, important initiative because, again, this is not where consumers uh, shop for protein. They shop for protein over that part of the store. As silly as it sounds, it's a huge distinction. So what we're doing is working on platforms that would allow us to, to come into the meat section and provide the consumer with something that would transition from a, uh, a raw state to a cooked state. Something you could cook Correct. yourself. Yeah. The days of this just being animal protein, I think, are rapidly coming to a close. Should we get a, uh, no, I don't, I don't a few steaks just to make the point that these are still delicious? Maybe just for research. No. Let's not eat one of those. Most of us know we need to do more to preserve the environment, but we're only willing to make minor changes in our daily lives. Maybe when plant-based meats are at our fingertips, we'll do the American thing. Eat them. And we're in Whole Foods. Traditionally a little bit of a selectively elitist chain. You're going to Walmart. This is my biggest customer. <laughs> okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna say <laughs>